series of messages on the miracles of Jesus with a particular heart to see how much Jesus is revealed in his great miracles. Tonight we're going to focus on a particular aspect of Christ's nature and power. We want to see his manner in his miracles. So all of them were not to just perform the miracle and moved on. Mm -hmm. This uh, this particular miracle, there's some extended dialogue, some extended circumstances as uh, Christ bore along with the inquiring individual. It's the healing of Jairus' daughter. We're going to be exposed now to Christ's mindset. Now, this is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm going to read Matthew's account of this. The ninth chapter of Matthew begin at verse 18 through 26. We will refer to the other gospel accounts as we proceed. Jesus had just finished saying, Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. <coughs> but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman was a disease with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may touch but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and saw the minstrels and the people making the noise. He said unto them, Give place, or, or cease. For the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose, and the fame thereof went abroad throughout all the land. Each gospel writer will pour, show a particular facet of this uh, marvelous miracle. A man named by name Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, what we would call elders. In Moses' time they had elders that governed the peoples. One time there was about 70 of them. And these were men of wisdom and understanding that sort of managed the affairs of the synagogue. This, this Jairus is one of those men. <coughs> Now let's look at the background of this, of this miracle because uh, it teaches there's a certain context in which Jesus works. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus' power is limitless, you must understand. There really isn't anything that of himself Jesus cannot do. Amen. But there are some environments in which he works, he's more apt to work than others. Mm -hmm. He's not apt to do very much in Bethsaida, for instance, in Capernaum in Chorazin, places like this, because there was a lot of unbelief there. So exactly what was the background here? Well, Jesus had just healed the Gadarene demoniac. It's fresh on the heels of that event. Mark tells us about this. Mark 5, 20 and 21. He, Jesus, the healed person, departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And then right after that, that's when this, this event that we're talking about took place. Luke says, Jesus said to the healed demoniac, Return to thy own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, and then this event that we just read about took place. Now it is, it is possible to try and live uh, a spiritual life on an on and off type basis. Sometimes uh, conscious of the Lord and then uh, 
de uh, degenerate into the, mon the monotony of life with no real conscious thought of God and, and then expect God to resume and work in you again and then go back to a state of normalcy where you're just kind of part of the world and then you see Jesus doesn't work this way. I really want to be emphatic about this. Jesus does not work this way. And where people imagine that he is working this way, they are just wrong. They have misassessed the situation. Whatever is going on, it's not Jesus that's working. Jesus always went about doing his Father's will and was in the context of that acute consciousness of God and his will that Jesus worked. Here and there he would confront people who had that similar <coughs> consciousness and that's the context in which he worked. You will never find him doing a great work in the midst of a bunch of Pharisees and Sadducees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that way. Yeah. Nor did he go down to the marketplaces or where there was a lot of entertainment going on and some of the games going on and do it down there. That, that's not where Jesus worked. If you do in fact want Jesus to work in your behalf, you've got to, you've got to get into an environment where Jesus is more apt to work. Mm -hmm. He can even work in over in a person's in a whale's belly down at the bottom of the yeah. sea. There are certain conditions Jesus works in. This one here sailed back across the sea from healing the gathering demoniac. Now let's look at the circumstances of this miracle, what was actually going on. Jesus was right in the middle of teaching. <laughs> That's something. He was right in the middle of teaching. Our text, Matthew said, verse 17. He just finished saying, Neither do men put new wine in old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish, but they put new wine into new bottles that both are preserved. And while he's in the midst of saying this, here comes Jairus. Right in the middle of, of this teaching. See, there's a certain environment where you can let your request be made known. There's a certain, there's a certain environment where you can do this. Now, if Herod was given a dissertation, he would not have allowed... <laughs> He would not have allowed this. If he was giving an oration to the people, it would not be allowed for someone to step up and interrupt mm -hmm. what he's saying. But see, kingdom activities are all interrelated. Mm -hmm. Anything that's of God it blends with what else God is doing. We also learn in the book of Mark, Mark 5, 21, that a lot of people had gathered to around him near the sea when he landed the boat. There's just a lot of people gathered around him. Here's what Mark 5, 21 says. When Jesus was passed over again by a ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh into the sea. So this is so Jairus not only comes where he was talking, he, he, he comes from the sea. Now the synagogue wasn't by the sea, I understand. So he took a little, took, took a little distance for, Jesus, for Jairus to get to Jesus. Something else we learn in the, the book of Luke, that everyone was so glad Jesus was back. Jesus had left, gone across the sea, and here's what, here's what Luke says, Luke 8, 40. It came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. Boy, they were glad to see him. I can tell you there's been times I've been glad to see him. When he's back, you know. And Luke 8, 40 also says, for they were all waiting for him. It's like standing on the sea. Almost reminds you of the second coming of Christ. They're all standing on the sea watching. Here are the boats. Coming across here from the land of Gennesaret. Here comes this boat back with Jesus. They're all waiting for him. All, all glad to see him. And in that context, Jairus is going to uh, make his request known. <clears throat> what a wonderful set of circumstances. huh? Jesus has just finished doing a great work. Jesus is teaching. The people have received him gladly. There's an air of joy about it. Jesus is teaching. They all were waiting for him, waiting with bated breath. What is he going to say? That's an excellent environment for him to work. You want to, uh, you want to culture that kind of environment. In fact, you can let your request be made known in that kind of environment. Huh? Amen. Look what a disadvantage it is when people are distracted from Christ's person. Uh -huh. See what a great disadvantage it is when people aren't glad that Jesus is speaking. And when they aren't refreshed by his words pouring forth, mm -hmm. that kind of environment subdues quests for Christ. Uh -huh. A lot of people don't seek Christ really because they're never in an environment that's conducive to seeking him. So this is a most excellent thing to note. Amen. Now let's look at, at the circumstances of this event. 
As I mentioned, he was, uh, Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue, a key figure. <laughs> Matthew 9.18 said there he was a certain ruler, specific one, ruler of the synagogue. Mark says that when he came, he fell down at Jesus' feet. Mark 5.22, Behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. Don't you just like the way that... Jairus by name. Remember it says of God he calls the stars by name and people more so. Uh -huh, amen. Jairus by name and when he saw, when he, Jairus saw him, Jesus, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly. So we're just here in a summary. This is extended request. Besought him greatly saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hand on her, and she, that she may be healed and she shall live. Now Matthew said she was dead. We would say, as good as dead. That's, there's no contradiction here, you understand. She was in their final stages of life, in other words, as good as dead. And Jairus asked Jesus, after he had worshipped him, just to come and put his hand on her. Just, you, 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 you believe that Jesus is effective enough that he could put his hand on your circumstance and correct it? Yeah, amen. See, this, this is a great faith. See, this is a great faith. That Jesus can, in fact, do this. Just, in fact, he can just say a word about it. Mm he -hmm. just put his hand. You can bring Jesus in contact with your circumstances, even though they're very grievous and difficult. It can be resolved. He had to believe that. And Luke said that he besought him very much. Luke 8, 41. Behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. So there's just another little something added. That he would come into his house, for he had one only daughter. So this is the only child here. About 12 years of age. Now, this is a key thing to remember about this event. And she lay a dying. But as he, Jesus, went, the people thronged him. So all of a sudden it looks like Jairus' situation is like swallowed up by the other, mm -hmm. other people. He's kind of swallowed up. We're going to see as he goes along, it looks like the whole attention is diverted from Jairus. It's something else it looks like. But it really wasn't. And the scriptures say that as he went, Jesus immediately went with him to his house. Matthew says, Jesus rose and followed him, and then he had so did his disciples. And Mark 5.24 says, Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. So mm -hmm. disciples, there wasn't just the immediate disciples, just a little big crowd gathered around him. And I, I must tell you that I long for the day when a lot of people want to follow Jesus. Amen. Amen. I, uh, I'm very thankful for the people we have that we fellowship with. I really am. But I look for the day when there doesn't, when there be a, a great gravitation to Jesus, and all the nations flow into it. That's, Amen. I'm looking for that. I'm looking for an overthrow of disinterest. I'm, I'm looking for an overthrow of being caught up in other things. That when Jesus is around, people just... You think these people didn't have anything else to do? Is that maybe what you think? You think some of these people weren't hungry? Think some of these people didn't need a job? You think none of them had anything else to do? Been in that part of the world, you know there's nobody that doesn't have something to do. But they, they thronged him as he went. So there's the case in the introduction of the circumstance. The request has been made known. Jesus is on his way, but it looks like he looks like he's be, his attention is being drawn aside to other, other people. Now as they journey along the way, an event happens. As they're passing through the area, word gets out that Jesus is passing by. And a certain woman with an issue of blood who was, according to the law, unclean and could not be among the people. She hears about Jesus. And here's what it says of her. Matthew says, Behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 
12 years. Hmm, that means the issue of her blood started the year Jairus' daughter was born. You've got to make this connection. This thing, God, Jesus is going to build Jairus' confidence on the way. Mm -hmm. On the way. See, Mark says, Mark 5, 25 and 26, a certain woman was had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. Well, I see he spills out the circumstance quite well. Luke says, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years which has spent all her living upon physicians neither could be healed by any. So there's a circumstance. Remember we have said often that Christ's miracles were in a context of impossibility. Whatever he did couldn't be done by anybody else. No one else. Now the Mark says that she heard about Jesus. Mark 5.27 When she had heard of Jesus. Well, now she had this issue of blood. She was ostracized by law, by God's law. She was ostracized from the people, but she kept alert. Some folk never would have heard about Jesus. They'd have been so caught up in their problems, they never would have heard. See, whatever difficulties you may encounter, you must remember this, whatever difficulties you encounter, whatever challenges of life you may face, don't let it affect your hearing. Yeah. Be sensitive so you know if Jesus is near, or you sense his presence, or you know this is the kind of environment Jesus occupies, connect it with your need. Amen. Connect it. And this is something no one else can do for you. No one could have told, made this woman do this. She made the connection mm -hmm. between Jesus and her situation. She heard of Jesus, and she didn't run out to meet Jesus. He's already passed by where she was. Mark 5, 27 says, She came in the press behind. The old throng, it said the people thronged him. So she was, she must have been weak and debilitated from this issue of blood. So she came through the pressing through the throng. Matthew says she, she's talking to herself while she's coming. Matthew 9 21, she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Mm -hmm. Mark 5 28 says, She said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Who told her that? Was there any point of doctrine that says that? No. Did anyone make some kind of announcement? If you just can get to Jesus and touch his clothes, you'll be whole. See this? She reasoned this out because she was struck with the magnitude of Christ. She, Amen. she knew that this person was so great that even what he wore was affected by what he, who he was. Amen. Do you, you, God may not spell out every little thing that you can see in Jesus. But he'll give you enough that you can draw some good, valid conclusions. This is a good conclusion because it, it worked. So it was the truth. What a thought. Now, she did in fact get to him and touched his clothes. In fact, Mark says straight, when she touched his clothes, straightway the fountain of her blood is dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Which means she didn't have any more symptoms. You know, people today to say to say, well, you you may you're healed, but you just have the symptoms. <laughs> well, of course, the symptoms. That's what all. That's what the real problem is about. Is the symptoms. In fact, that's the only way you know you have anything is by the symptoms. Huh? You wouldn't even know you were sick if you didn't have the symptoms. That's right. So this is one of the dumbest doctrines Satan ever contrived. It's been swallowed hook, line, and sinker. This would be like saying, well, you got a paycheck, you just don't have money. That's all. <laughs> you just have the symptoms of poverty. That's all. Well, go to the grocery store on that and see if you can get anything. Huh? But she knew. She knew what it was like to be sick, and she knew what it was like to be well. She was able, she knew in herself. See, something happened to this woman without one word from Jesus. There wasn't one word said from Jesus. Nobody was traveling with Jesus, any of his disciples or anybody. They didn't say anything. She just, this all happened independent of everybody else. She just looked like a person if anybody saw her at all. As soon as she touched his garment, Luke says, Luke 8, 44, she came behind him and touched the border. How's that? 
She didn't just reach up, take hold of a full piece of his clothing, touch the border of his garment, and immediately the, her issue of blood staunched, or it just stopped flowing right immediately. <laughs> I'm so anxious to meet this woman. <laughs> her account has, uh, has opened the door of hope. <laughs> Nobody may know you're in quest for Jesus. You may not be able to spell out exactly what you're trying to do, but all you're trying to do is get in, get where he is and touch something he's connected with. With your spirit, just touch it. Perhaps this has happened to you, and suddenly you just knew in yourself. It's resolved. What a glorious, glorious feeling. Touched his clothes and made, she was made whole. Now, after she's made whole, Jesus speaks to her. Matthew 9, 22 says, Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, well, that was a good sign right there. Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole, and the woman is made whole from that hour, which means the issue did not come back. Mark, he gives a little more extensive account. Mark 5:30. Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. How's that for sensitivity? Here's the Lord Jesus was full of grace and truth. But he knew when some of it went out. Now this is this tremendous crowd around him, but it apparently wasn't going out. That's right. Huh? It wasn't going out. But here was a sensitive soul... Close enough to Jesus, his what he was filled with went out, and Jesus, Jesus sensed it. He turned him about in the press and said, "Who touched my clothes?" Well, of course, the disciples said unto him, "Thou seest the multitude thronging thee." He's like, "Who hasn't touched your clothes?" That would be a better question. And seest thou who touched me? Well, it's a different kind of touch. There's some people that go to church, and there's some people that go to church. Amen. <laughs> there's two different kinds of people. There's some people that hear the word, and there's some people that hear the word. Amen. There's a difference. Here was, here was a lot of people with Jesus, where he was at, but here's one person that got something that nobody else got. That's yeah. right. You want to determine to be that person. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And don't think for one moment you can't be. <laughs> and he looked about you got to put yourself in the shoes of this woman now. He looked about to see her that had done this thing. Who is this? That broke through. But the woman, fearing and trembling. Notice what now, notice what Mark says. Mark 5, 31. Knowing what was done in her. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. She knew what was done in her. Came and fell down before him. And told him all the truth. Yes. Well, what truth? She told him, I was in the press. I pressed towards you. I said within myself, I can touch your clothes. And he made all. I got close. I touched him. I've been healed. She's told, I just told him what it was. He knew all this. Oh, how that must have sounded to whoever was with him. Right. He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. What do you mean? Well, you weren't. it, it wasn't my clothes, really, that did this. You thought if you could just touch my clothes, but really, really you did more than touch my clothes. You touched me. Amen. Your faith come in contact with me. Now, immediately after this, this is on the way to see Jairus. Immediately, while almost while this woman's talking, some servants of Jairus come and tells him his daughter's died. Right on the way to this. Mark 5. 35 says, while he yet spake, while he's talking, while he's talking to the woman, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain who said, Thy daughter's dead. Just listen how comforting this sounds. Thy daughter's dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Just let him go on about his. No further need now. We pass into the domain of death. No need to call for him now. Luke 8, 49 says, While he yet spake, you've got to get this picture now. Here's a great blessing occurred. 
And while this blessing is being commented on by the Lord of glory, here comes some bad news to Jairus. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. <clears throat> but see, this was a test to Jairus. Mm -hmm. Two things were occurring here. One, there was apparently a slight delay. Jesus stopped and looked about the dialogues with this woman, so it looked like there was a slight delay. Jairus had told him this situation was urgent. I have only one daughter. She's dying. Come to my house. You think they'd sprint to the house, perhaps? But see, it's a, like a slight delay. It's a test of Jairus' faith. But then a woman who had an issue of blood for as long as his daughter was old, this is like a token. Oh, there's, there's hope here. Mm -hmm. Your daughter hadn't been sick all the time. This woman been sick the whole time your daughter was alive. And when she's going home well, as soon as, soon as Jairus hears this word, Mark 5.36 says, As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid! That's right. Be not afraid! Only believe! Mm -hmm. Luke 8.50 says, But when Jesus heard it, as heard this report, he answered him, saying, Fear not! Believe only! Notice what it looks like. And she shall be made whole. How was that? How do you see Jesus' manner here? He hadn't, he hadn't done anything yet. They weren't at the house yet. But he announces to so Jairus, she's going to be whole. But it's going to be conditioned on you believing. Now in this case here, it's not going to be conditioned on whether your daughter believes. She's dead. She's passed out of the domain where you believe. So to her, she's going to be conditioned on you. And there are, believe it or not, there are some people whose uh, restoration depends upon your faith. Mm -hmm. There are some people like this. Mm -hmm. John tells us about this, that if a man sees as a brother sin a sin not unto death and shall ask, God will give him life in behalf of those that ask. Mm -hmm. James said that it's possible for a person to save a soul from death and hide a multitude of sins. So there's some people whose recovery actually depends on your faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the case. Here's the case in point right here. Jairus' faith is going to tell a story. Now as they proceed along, Jesus thins out the multitude. He only allows three people to go with him. And here's what he, what he says, Mark 5, 37. He suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Luke 8, 51 says, When he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the maiden. So you got five people are privy now. Right? Five people are going to be privy to this miracle. There are some things Jesus does, he does not do in the multitude. Mm -hmm. There are some times, there are some works, there are such great magnitude that only a few people see them. And it's going to depend on them making it be made known. This is why you never want to be discouraged when there's a handful of people. Amen. You never want to be discouraged. Amen. Because sometimes, sometimes a handful of people see things nobody else could ever see. Mm -hmm. So this is a great, great kingdom truth. <clears throat> now let's see what happens as the, uh, the event itself, what happens. Jesus comes to the house, and the first thing he confronts is there's some mourners and a lot of noise. He calls it noise in the scripture. They were singing in mourning, singing uh, dirt funeral songs, you might say. Matthew 9.23, here's what Matthew says. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and people making noise, <laughs> you know, they were actually kind of trying to comfort the people by whatever this is like their custom. But it's interesting, maybe he calls it making noise. Yeah, I've, I've heard some things in the name of Christ that were like noise, haven't you? Just noise. Mark says in Mark 5, 38, He cometh into the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult. <coughs> and then that wept and wailed greatly. How's that? Here's a weeping, lamenting, wailing multitude. And Jesus says, tumult. 
And Luke 8, 52 says, And all wept and bewailed her, because this little girl had, uh, had passed away. So Jesus confronted this multitude, and you really got to project yourself into the situation to see how this is going to sound. <clears throat> As he projects himself into the situation, Matthew says, Matthew 9, 24, He said unto them, Give place! Let's just stop all this. For the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. <laughs> I must add a, I must add a sound into them, huh? He's going to speak of things that are not are not as though they are. Right. Mark says, Mark five thirty nine. When he was come in, he said unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead. But sleepeth. Luke 8.52 said, But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. Of course, now the difference between Jesus and men is Jesus can substantiate what he says. Yes. That's the difference. I've, you, I've seen people, and I don't mean to speak derisively of them, but I've seen people speak to the devil and speak to the disease and speak to this and speak to that. And nothing happened. But this, let me tell you one thing. This is not the way Jesus speaks. Amen. Well, the people responded to Jesus. Now, they just, they were in the process of weeping and wailing. But notice what happens. The whole frame of the setting changes suddenly. Mm -hmm. Matthew 9, 24 says, They laughed him to scorn. How's that? From weeping and wailing to laughing. Hmm? Mark 5.40 says they laughed him to scorn, Mark. And Luke 8.53 says they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they knew, as far as earthly circumstances was concerned, this, this girl is, is dead. And I mean, how ignorant can you get to say that she's asleep? I can just hear how they reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of man is this? Well, what's Jesus going to do about this? Matthew 9.25 says... When the people were put forth, he went in. Mm -hmm. So before he went in, they went out. He purged out the old leaven. Mark 5.40 says, when he, when he had put them out. Mm -hmm. How he did this, I don't know how he did it, but they, they got rid of the scorners had to get out of the situation. And Luke 8.54 says, he put them all out. Do you think that Jesus still does something like this? Do you think there is such things perhaps that happen in churches as purging so God can do something? You suppose that's the case? That sometimes there are certain influences resident among God's people that have to leave before Jesus really does the work. I mean, you no doubt there isn't anyone here who hasn't experienced this to some degree. Sometimes it's even on a personal basis in your own life. There's some things that he has to put out before he comes in. See? Certain habits have to go before he begins to work. But you're learning about the manner of Jesus. And the scripture tells us that uh, he took the father and mother and Peter, James, and John and went in to the room where the girl was laying dead. Mark 5.40, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that are with him, which is Peter, James, and John, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. Don't you just sense his control of the situation? He's not rattled by this tumult. He's not chagrined because there's just a handful of people that understand. Mm -hmm. This is a master that's in control of the situation. This is the Lord of glory who does whatsoever he wills. And here they stand, the mother, the father, and Peter, James, and John. Good set of witnesses, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Matthew 9, 25 says, He went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. Mark says, Mark 5, 41, He took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha kumai, which being interpreted is, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. Luke says, and he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, mm -hmm. 
saying, Maid, arise! And somewhere in the unseen world, yeah. the spirit of that little girl heard his voice. Mm -hmm. Just like Lazarus yeah. heard him from another domain. Mm -hmm. I wonder how she felt having to come back. Yeah. But she did. Mm -hmm. Luke is very specific about it. Luke 8, 55, and her spirit came again, and she arose straightway. So it all yeah. happened in a, just like the resurrection of the dead in the yeah. twinkling of an eye. This yeah. was a sample of the resurrection of the dead. Amen. And immediately in a moment, the spirit entered the body, and she sat up. That's the same thing going to happen in the resurrection of the dead. All the spirits, mm -hmm. all the people are going to enter in all the bodies, Amen. and are going to get up immediately Amen. at the word of the king. He says that... And his voice. So he's going he's gonna, to, this time he said, Damsel, did just you. He had to say that in the whole countryside. He emptied out. <laughs> and when he says a general word, is that not going to be something? <laughs> Aren't you anxious for the resurrection of the dead? What are they, it's only going to happen one time. Do you want to take it all in when it happens? Yeah. That's what kind of word we're talking about. Straight way the dead and the... Luke says that her spirit came in, she stroke, straightway arose. Mark, he has a little stuff. He says, Mark 5, 42, and straightway the damsel arose and walked. See, he adds, he adds that. And then Jesus, this is Jesus for you. He's thinking about this damsel. She come into this body again. And he figured she probably was hungry. Even though she'd been away. See, hunger is a fleshly appetite. It's not a spiritual appetite, the kind of hunger we're talking about. So, Mark 5.43 says, He commanded that something should be given her to eat. Mm -hmm. How's that? <laughs> That's what Jesus does when someone comes back from the dead. Give them something to eat. Yeah. Huh? Nurse them up. Luke 8.55 says, He commanded to give her meat. <laughs> not, not an hors d'oeuvre, not a carrot. Huh? Give her something of some substance. To eat. Can you see the picture, the parallel of this, and when you're brought back from death and trespasses and yes. sins? Something to eat. What a marvelous picture. Well, <laughs> the scripture says in Mark 5 42, and they were astonished with great astonishment. <laughs> well, I guess so. <laughs> Luke 8 56 says her parents were astonished. <laughs> Now, Jairus didn't go to Jesus to raise his daughter. He went to her for Jesus to stop her from dying. Stop her from dying. But Jesus let her die anyway, just like he let Lazarus die. See, there are some things Jesus lets go a little further than you'd like him to go. Mm -hmm. You really got to see this now about Jesus? Mm -hmm. You may have assessed your situation. This is the kind of situation God's got to do something. He's got to do something now. And he may say, no, no, no. I don't have to do something now. I'm going to let this go a little further. Yeah. So then you'll really know what I can do. See? Lazarus' is case. Jairus' daughter is the case. <coughs> the one glorious effects of this miracle. But now Jesus says something. <laughs> he says something that I know was very hard to obey. Mark 5.43, he charged them straightly that no man should know it. Don't you tell this to anybody. Luke 8.56 says he charged them they should tell no man what was done. Well, you, yeah, people are going to see Jairus' daughter walking around. That's right. But he told them not to provide the details of this to anybody. Yeah. Why not? Just let the people ponder on this for a while. Amen. Let the wailers and the mourners and the scoffing ones. Yes. Let's see what they say when they see Jairus' daughter walking around among them. Don't explain it to them. <laughs> As I have people see people who are profligates, steeped in sin, and all of a sudden they are renewed, and sometimes it's good. Just don't tell them why. Just let them ponder it for a while. And one other thing. Uh, thing that Matthew adds on this event. Matthew 9, 26, the fame hereof went abroad into all the land. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, he told him not to tell anything, but this, this, is a, this is a walking witness. This is a walking witness that just went abroad through all the land. Now, what are some things we perhaps could learn from this? Well, you do want to seek the Lord while he can be found. Amen. Jairus sought the Lord while he could be found. He knew where he was, he could get there, and he got there. Another thing, it's possible to believe that some things can be done, but that other things perhaps doesn't enter into your mind that they can be done. It's possible to believe that Jesus could abort some downward trend in your life or some awakening trouble or some situation is getting out of hand. Perhaps you, perhaps you do have enough faith to believe God can stop this, this thing from happening at all. But then there are some things that Jesus can do that maybe, maybe you don't believe. Maybe you don't believe that he can let this just get plumb out of hand and then bring you back. Maybe you don't know that. And in a sense, it's perhaps good that we can't. But there'll be somebody, like this woman with an issue of blood, there'll be somebody Jesus will let you see that, that was in a worse case than you were and went away. Uh, Cleanse. Another thing we learn from here is that death is really when the spirit separates from the body. This sort of defines death because the spirit came back again. So you die when your spirit leaves your body. Yes. And only Jesus could ever that spirit come back. Now there are people that testify of after death experiences to their own master they stand or fall. But in each case when the spirit came back, it came back at the word of Jesus. Yeah. That's what it came back for. If this happened at all, it happened because yeah. of the word of Jesus. Here's something else you can learn, that when Jesus is teaching, it's a good time to seek mercy. Amen. When he's in the process of this, what he was, he was in the process of teaching when Jairus made this known. Here's something else, that Jesus does have compassion on the needy. While he's teaching, here's this interruption, and Jesus immediately goes with him. Aborts the teaching and goes with him. See? So Jesus is fundamentally compassionate. You've got to believe this in your heart. That you, do, you, you may think that you're interrupting, but you really, this isn't how Jesus looks at it mm -hmm. at all. Another thing you learn about this is Jesus is intolerant <coughs> of unbelief. It is offensive to Jesus. Why make ye all this ado? Why are you talking about a recession? Huh? Why are all this to do about the... you got to kind of bring it up to date, you know. Yeah. Why are you talking about the economy? Hmm? Why all this to do? Why haven't you noticed that I'm here? Mm -hmm. yes. See? You lost your job? My son recently, see, he lost his job because he works for Northwest Airlines. And at the same time, he lost his wife. Mm -hmm. But he's not making an ado, even though it's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Why? Why not just throw in the sponge and all is lost? Why not? Why not when all your resources are taken and you're left, you don't even have a bed to sleep on? Huh? Mm -hmm. This is his case. How can you maintain your bearings? Because he knows Jesus is in the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All it's going to take is a word mm -hmm. or a touch. Jesus just to become involved in the case. That's all it's going to take. Mm -hmm. They tell us that there are some lawyers that people have confidence that they can just get involved in the case. They can kind of turn it around. They have that reputation. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Jesus always does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If Jesus gets involved in the case... If you can involve him in your case, if you can get him involved in what's troubling you, it will be resolved. Amen. amen. Oh, that's a wonderful truth to see. Yes, amen. And he doesn't have a tolerance for unbelief. He puts the unbelievers, puts them out. Jesus didn't come to give a show to unbelievers. He really, he really didn't. Put them out. Why? They are gigantic distractions to the parents and everybody else. Put them out. What a difference it must have been to those parents when the when the wailers and the scoffers left. How peaceful! 
how peaceful it must have been to be in the room alone with Jesus. And he gives tokens to those who are seeking his aid to build their faith. See, it works a great miracle along the way <laughs> to kind of build up the faith of Jairus. And here's something else you learn about Jesus. Whoever is recovered is given something to eat. See, sin, like death, debilitates you. This little girl left this body. The body is not made. To, the body can't be sustained without the spirit. The, the spirit of a man is what sustains his body. And so this body deterioration has, has set in. And, I, and Jesus, I know Jesus could have just made the body equal to the situation. Mm -hmm. But instead he used the natural mm -hmm. processes mm -hmm. because the people that way become involved with this girl. I mean, here you bring food and you're looking at this girl <laughs> that was dead. You're looking at her and seeing her eating and it builds everybody yeah. everybody up and you should expect it. If, For instance, if you have ever fallen from the Lord, I hope you are not like in a fallen state tonight, but if you were in a fallen state tonight, Jesus can not only raise you up, He can feed you again. Amen. Now, it doesn't say this little girl's appetite had gone away, does it? They didn't have to like spoon feed her a little teaspoon of milk or something like this. She gave her some meat. Yeah. That, in this case, means healthy food. Yeah. Good food. So they didn't have to give her baby food or something like this. Even the newborn babe is capable of very robust appetite and food. And Jesus will see to it that you're fed. This is the account of Jesus raising Jairus' daughter from the dead. I've just kind of overviewed it, but isn't there some wonderful things mm -hmm. to be seen here? That even if Jesus looks like he's busy with somebody else, mm -hmm. bring your case anyway. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if after he's heard you, it looks like somebody else is getting the blessing, thank God for it and stay with him. He'll come to your case. Yeah. Amen. He will. And when, you, when in, your, in the surroundings around your dilemma is filled with distracting noise and people who don't believe and people who misassess the situation and people who have a lot of answers that are not helpful, you can believe that Jesus has the ability to put them all out so you're not distracted by them anymore and to deal with your case.